Hey everybody, I just wanted to hop on here real quick and share a word that God put on my heart. But if I'm being honest, I'm struggling. You see, ironically, the passage I want to talk to you about is about the fruitless fig tree. And right at this very moment, I'm feeling kind of fruitless. Now, if we look at the New Testament in Galatians, we read that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faith, and self-control. And at this very moment, I'd say I'm struggling with about 50% of those because my kids, right? I know you can all probably relate, those of you that are quarantined in your home with your kids right now. But the thing is, is I asked them just like, hey, give me 30 minutes. I just want to record this message real quick just to share. And um, since that time, they just, they need everything. They're just like coming in for every little thing. They're running around, they're yelling. And I've had to start over like 32 times. So my patience and my joy... It's running a little bit thin, but we're going to persevere because I am excited to talk about this passage, this event that happens during Holy Week. Now, John talked the other day about the triumphal entry, right? Palm Sunday, where Jesus was received as king. And this comes not long after that. And to me, at first, it kind of feels like it's a little bit misplaced. But we know that if it's in the Bible and if it's placed right here, that's significant. And so let's take a look at it. It's found in both Matthew and Mark, but we're going to look at the account in Mark. And we're going to start in chapter 11, uh, verse 12. And it says, On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. So we're going to pause right there for a moment. We see that Jesus is hungry. And he goes over to this fig tree, fully expecting to be able to eat its fruit. It was full of leaves, full of promise, right? And then he gets to it, and there's no fruit. And so he's frustrated, and he curses the tree. And you might think, but it says right there it wasn't the season for figs. So why was he so shocked? Why did he expect fruit if it wasn't the season for it? Well, the thing with the fig tree is in March, it would develop an early fruit, a green um, bud, probably about the size of an almond. And it was totally edible. It was bitter and it wasn't very good, but it, you could eat it. And sometimes people did, especially those that were poor and needed food. And so what happens next is the leaves come in about April and then the figs come later. So if there are leaves on the tree, that would have been an indication that there should be fruit present as well. And so Jesus went fully expecting that this fruit would be there and it wasn't. And so he was frustrated. He used this as an opportunity to teach the disciples. He used it as a teaching moment. That's what he always did. I love that. He would just take everyday situations and encounters and turn them into teaching moments. Now, I've tried to do this with my kids, right? I don't know if you've done it too, where something happens and I just, I see the spiritual implications and I try to turn it into this teaching moment. And my kids are just usually like, okay, mom, you know, they're not super receptive. So I pray that the disciples were a little bit more receptive than my kid is. But what God was really frustrated about was the fact that the nation of Israel was much like this fig tree. They were full of promise on the outside. They looked like they were full of faith. They were very religious, but underneath there was no fruit. When you got up close, when you looked at their heart, they were not fruitful. In fact, they were corrupt. They were taking advantage of people. They had turned the temple into a place of business and it was no longer a, a place of prayer and worship. And so Jesus was disappointed with the nation of Israel and he wanted this to be an opportunity to address that. In fact, you see where he goes into the temple just a few verses after the fig tree and then he comes back to the fig tree. So this is like a story within a story which really reflects the heart of it and the the spiritual implications, which was the nation of Israel was spiritually barren, just like this tree. If we continue reading in verse 20 of chapter 11, it says, As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. Now, I love this because I believe that Jesus could have easily come to the disciples with like a spirit of correction, a spirit of rebuke, a, a 
teaching moment as far as like what not to do. Don't be hypocritical. Don't be fruitless. Be faithful. And instead of coming to them with that kind of a heart, he comes to them with this just encouragement and this inspiration to just live this life of faith, to just trust him. He says, if you believe, like just have faith in me, just trust me. If, if you say to that mountain, get up and go into the sea and you truly believe it, it will be done. He wanted them to know the power of that kind of faith in their life. And it is that kind of faith where we believe that God can move mountains that will produce in us the fruit that we need to be different than the world. He goes on to talk about the prayer and he says, you know, if you pray anything and, and you believe it, it will be done. It will be given to you. He wanted them to know that like he came to have favor and blessing on them. And if they ask things according to his will, it would be done. And then the last part of that, I think it's interesting that he kind of switches to forgiveness and it might feel like that's kind of random, but that's not random at all because it all works together. For us to be living a fruitful life, we have to have faith in God. We have to be in communion and talk and pray and believe. And we also have to be in community with one another in a way that, that shows love and forgiveness. And so as we all kind of navigate this season we're in, this quarantine, this, this crisis, um, the world's watching us. The world's looking at us. If if you say you're a believer, if you're a Christian, you probably have neighbors and coworkers and family members that are just kind of sitting back going, I wonder how they're going to respond. And we have the opportunity to demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit in our life. They're going to be watching our Facebook posts to see, like, are we sharing things that are inspiring and encouraging? They're going to be seeing if we have joy in our life or if we're operating in a spirit of fear. They're going to see if we're being the hands and feet of Jesus and showing love and trying to be part of the solution right now. Um, or if we're going to be critical and judgmental. And we also have an opportunity to show a lot of grace to people that need it right now. Because it can be really easy during this time to become really critical of one another and judgmental of how everybody else is handling it. And so we have the opportunity just to show love. And so that is my hope and my prayer. That's what I took away from this. I mean, this is not about perfection. It, it, if you know us at all, you know that we're real honest about the fact that we are a work in progress and we struggle. But I'm so grateful that God sacrificed his only son so that we can be in relationship and we can learn to walk out our faith and we can learn to develop this fruit in our life so that we are different because we have this hope to share with the world. And that is that is our heart. Well, we're not perfect. We have a love for Jesus and a desire to reach others. And I think that we're gonna do that by demonstrating this kind of faith. And so that's my prayer for you. John and I love you so much. We miss you and we are excited to celebrate Easter weekend with you virtually. And we hope to connect with you in person very soon.